In my videos and the guiding chapters on my pages about physical computing, I have explained how to connect a load to a GPIO using transistors, relays or H bridges. Currently I am busy in writing new chapters about the software side, teaching how to control GPIOs and sew robots remotely over the internet with only few lines of code and using free open source software. Here you can see another project that will become part of the series. These are two tiny computers that can be used to send and receive text messages. Input and output devices are connected to the GPIOs so that the semiconductor machines can interact with humans. The left terminal, which is based on an Arduino Uno, is composed as simple as possible. On the shield there is an 8x8 LED matrix for displaying data and a button next to it is used to enter text by Morse code. The right terminal is based on a Raspberry Pico, connected to it are a display with a resolution of 320 x 240 pixels as output device and a numeric keypad as input device, letters can be selected by pressing the digits several times. Both PCs also have a communication interface composed of an infrared LED and a corresponding sensor so that data can be exchanged wirelessly. In a previous video I used acoustic signals to teach about basic problems that have to be taken into account when exchanging data between computers. I will soon demonstrate ways to connect the terminals to the World Wide Web. Anyone who has understood how to establish basic communication can start working on the design of the terminals. Only the 80 Mega 328P microcontroller of the Arduino is installed on this board and the LED matrix is larger. Well, I must admit that this design won't become a million seller either, however I will continue trying to improve the look of the terminal. Data exchange via an infrared interface is invisible and inaudible and this is a basic problem with regards to security, because you simply have to trust that the two computers forward the data without modifications or secret extra messages embedded. What and how the two servants talk to each other is specified by the software running on them. A secure exchange of data can only take place if the source code of the software is accessible and that this code is composed of so few text lines that a single person is able to read and understand it. Errors in the software code can lead to additional commands being injected via the communication interface with which your computer begins to do things that are not in your interest. As I already said, you can neither see nor hear data exchange and the same applies to all processes running on the silicon of your computers. The more lines of code a software is composed of, the more of unwanted points of attack exist and the more certain you can be that not everything your computer does is in your personal interest. So called malicious code is easier to hide the larger the base code of an operating system is because there is, a tree is best hidden in the forest. If an operating system needs gigabytes of software storage and gigahertz of processor speed to work through this mess, it is not just a forest, but a software jungle. To give you a false feeling of security, additional software named Virus Scanner or Spyware Tool is packed on top, snake oil for the sheep, the jungle continues to grow wild. The latest buzzwords of the make it more complex companies are quantum communication and blockchains. 
Bullshit bingo, because I will show in future chapters how to establish secure communication with simple terminals. For the reasons already mentioned, the accentuation is on simple. Those instructions will be written for future shepherds, rather than for the faint hearted sheep on the planet, because the Barbie slogan, it just works, must read, but how does it actually work? The fact that the text has to be entered via Morse code on the Arduino computer is somehow cumbersome, but it shows another basic problem of digital communication. The more comfortable a computer is designed for handling, the more complex the hard and software becomes and so the less secure a system will be. The source code of the Arduino terminal shown here is relatively short, even so it contains all instruction needed to enter, display and send text. Another microcontroller is built into the display connected to the Raspberry Pico and what this chip does, besides controlling the 76800 pixels, remains a secret of the manufacturer. Yes, my dear sheep. The more functions you outsource from your brain to your supposedly smart helpers, the more remote controlled your life becomes. That is really just how it works. I will show that simple can also mean easier to use than the Morse terminal. Be patient because no one becomes a digital shepherd by watching a 5 minute video. The series on secure communication between computers has long been on my list of topics to be dealt with. That I am taking this now is due to this year's Hackaday Prize, which is searching for new solutions to display and exchange data. You can already find many chapters on physical computing on my website. Have a click, because there you can read the source code of the software running on the two terminals shown in this video. Yes, read. As to me, videos about software don't make much sense, simply because you don't learn coding by watching source code, but by reading and understanding the logic behind the text lines. And if you would like to support me financially in creating more freely available learning material, you are welcome to click the donate button on my pages, many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it. In future chapters I will demonstrate how to write the code lines for communication terminals in such a way that not every computer in range can read your messages. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.